Sias Turks, Sias Turks, Sias Turks. Welcome to the Science Jerks. I'm your host, Dave Chacho. With me is your other host, Robert Chan. Hi. And we're back for the second episode with stand-up comedian Lisa Curry. Welcome back. Thank you for having me. What were you about? I was about to say, welcome back, stand-up comedian Lisa Curry. (laughs) (laughs) I realized that was not awkward. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, Dave just suffered a really horrible stroke. (laughs) (laughs) The left side of my head is throbbing. We're going to plow through. (laughs) (laughs) So it'll be about a normal episode. I can't finish. Uh, How was your first uh, Science Tricks experience? That was fun. I like recording recording, uh, podcasts, I think. You uh, do you have a podcast yourself? I just started one. Uh, uh, it hasn't. Um, I just did a couple of test runs so far. So new, it's not even up yet. Uh, so new, it's not even up yet. Well, I want to. I also want to record several before I start releasing them. Yep, yep. But it's called Long Story Long. Oh, nice. Which is something that I say because I'm always. I'm never going to shorten a story. Like if I'm telling you something, I'm like Long Story Long. <laughs> And then everybody's like, oh, do you mean short? And I'm like, no. Nope. No, you're going to be here Strap for a while. in. <laughs> <laughs> Did you get longstorylong.com yet? Uh, got I got longstorylongpodcast.com. <laughs> oh, nice. uh, okay. There's um, Lisa Long Story Long. <laughs> <laughs> already got it. it was, yeah. Uh, who, who'd have thunk it, but. There's, you know, some, there's some motherfucker out there that's taking every website that I want. <laughs> uh, what's your background with science? Like, did you like science in school? Did I you... loved it. I was actually, I was really good at it. When I was in elementary school, I was like in all this gifted and talented stuff. And so I got to take a couple classes at Purdue. And mm. we did like a, some kind of like super easy earth science class at Purdue when I was, I mean, but I was in third grade. <laughs> um, so I mean, it was like a really easy like a Doogie Hauser situation. Yeah, kind of. And I always liked it, but I don't. It's one of those things like there's so much happening constantly and changing. You can't unless you're constantly reading up on it. It's like a language. You lose all of it. So I think what, you know. That's what we're here for. <laughs> we're yes. here to keep you up on it. We will keep you informed of the science that we make up. <laughs> on the show. Oh no, the science is real. Our interpretation of it, <laughs> it is on occasion flawed. Perfect. <laughs> uh, or sometimes, always. Uh, let's uh, let's say let, let's do some science. Eschatology. I'm sorry. I just said 800 year lifespan, <laughs> and you said no, thank you. I just picture every. Well, here's the thing. I just I do pictured be- <laughs> 800 years of <laughs> orgasms. 800 years of uh, delicious bacon cheese. Let's get real. There's not even 100 years of orgasms. 800 (laughs) years of getting turned down for jobs in Hollywood. (laughs) (laughs) Exactly. 800 years of the grind. (laughs) 800 years of open mics. (laughs) <laughs> can you imagine right now they just feel like they're that long am i right folks is this on <laughs> what okay uh before we get to the uh reasons why or why not you would want to live 800 years here's what happened geneticists have managed to extend the lifespan of a yeast bacteria uh by 10 times Which is to say they normally live about a week, (laughs) and so they managed to make it live 10 weeks. Uh, What they did is they put the yeast on a calorie-restricted diet, and they knocked out two of their genes, RAS2 and SCH9. The same genes are found in human beings. Those are genes that promote cancer and aging in humans. And That's the death genes. (laughs) Yes, the death genes. Pretty much. That's something that contributes to it. I mean, they're still tinkering with it. They're not obviously just going to go around, start knocking out the genes in people because, you know, there could be problems resulting from that. Uh, but No, but it says in this story that they are doing it on people in no, Ecuador. No, no, no. Well, no, no. The, right? They're, they're not <laughs> doing it on the people. These people have those genes knocked out of them. It's a mutation. Oh, and what? The, the, problem, the problem is is that people that have both those genes knocked out tend to have severe growth deficits, other health problems. They're super tiny. Um, and they're hoping to find some of them that only have one of the genes knocked out. Uh, or or they, there are some people who have one gene knocked out and they're normal size. Interesting. So the idea is, okay, we know that these two things affect aging. Let's figure out how we can utilize that knowledge to 
let people live longer so without you, those problems. You could live 800 years in horrible, excruciating I think that agony. Sounds yeah, okay. And, exhausting. And you'll be three feet tall. And See, deformed. I would be fine with being three feet tall and living 800 years. No. Excuse Cancel. me, not so much. Well, excuse me. You can't even ride roller coasters. Why would you want 800 <laughs> years of roller coasters? Yeah, but you. Fucking You're so limited. Cast When's the last time you saw a three foot tall person was like, wow, that person is hot? Peter Dinklage. Like, without it being a Boom, child. Done. <laughs> Peter effing Dinklage. And no. you know what? If I were half as badass as he was, no problem. No way. I've always wanted to make it to a hundred. I can't. Eight hundred. That's excessive. That sounds. Well, here's the thing. Exhausting. Here's the thing. Open mics are terrible, but you do enough open mics and you get better. <laughs> what happens if instead of having not every ten years in the business? Now you have a hundred years in the business, and you're only getting better and better. No, because then everybody not has hundred years. Everyone gets better. No, yeah, not everyone For gets one thing, better. Do well, we need to bring out the list? <laughs> <laughs> Those people will eventually stop because now they have hundreds of years. They yeah, can just after, go do something after else. After six hundred years on the open mic circuit, I've decided that I'm just not cut out for this. <laughs> oh my god! So what oh, I want to know sad. is, so they they got rid of the death genes in these yeast. How did they end up dying? Did they still die of old age? Just yeah, ten eventually things times as long. Yeah. So or when, did they all when... commit suicide because they were so bored? <laughs> little yeast guns in their hands. <laughs> like I can't take. This Do you anymore. still start to decay when you're like thirty? Because that would be fucking horrible. Like well, seven hundred and thirty years of slow decay. <laughs> You I just look like the crypt keeper works. after 200 years. And, oh, you just stay in that The thing is, it's not going to, we're not going to go to this place where you will have to live 800 years. You can bail if you're <sighs> done. But for those of us who want to keep trying new shit. The Kevorkian industry is going to be huge. Oh, my God. <laughs> we'll have the uh, suicide booths like they have in, uh, like in Futurama. You've selected slow and painful. But I think the answer is no. That the the idea is that you don't decline in when you hit whatever age I am, thirty eight, <laughs> <laughs> because these genes apparently nobody knows exactly why they evolved in species, but there are genes that basically tell your cells to stop replenishing themselves after a certain time. They just kind of like a switch. They go, okay, that's enough multiplying and being healthy nobody's gonna you fuck can... you anymore <laughs> yeah <You're> done you've, <laughs> you've served your don't time even bother. You've, you've, you've given it a good shot but uh, that's all that's all we're gonna start shutting down the system yeah it's just to fucking make more of you and so once that's over with and you know, be on your way <laughs> yeah and nice. that's the thing like Lovely. after you're oh i'm sorry did you expect <laughs> more out of life did you not get that the whole point is? Listen, so that's still going to hit at the same time again, and then you're on you're on board until 600 even. 200, <laughs> 200. Like, 200? That's too much. There's so many TV shows I still have to catch up on, you guys. <laughs> oh, my God. Seriously, I haven't even... I've, I've barely that's started true. Breaking Bad. I've still got... Just watching all the old go. Doctor Whos will take you your first Holy 300 years. crap. That's, yeah, that's 50 <laughs> years worth of this shit. Yeah, I vacillate back and forth between wanting to live forever and... And wanting to kill myself right now. That's pretty much. I'm either. Oh, I'm in one of those two states. Anytime you see me, and it just kind of bounces back and forth. So uh, I don't know. 800 sounds maybe somewhere in the you middle. You know, if people could live that long, then there's no sense of urgency for other things. I think that then you would lose a lot of the sentimentality of life because it's like, oh, we well, we can. No fast food. We have 800 years to go visit Grandpa. <laughs> <laughs> We don't need to see a stinky ass today. You know what I mean? <laughs> well, Grandpa's going to be out water skiing. First of all, the and, idea well of my parents 700s. living to 800 is <laughs> fucking horrifying. Yeah. Imagine that the... Kill them both with my bare hands right on, now. <laughs> that they're going to leave on Facebook when we're in our 600s and <laughs> they're in their 650s. <laughs> Facebook will be a relic by then. Facebook will be a relic. It by tomorrow. <laughs> It is. I already feel old, like being born before the internet and before cell phones and oh god, yeah, things like that. But like, imagine when we're seven hundred and fifty, and the kids are like, "Oh, I have my laser teleporter to Alpha Centauri in my pocket." You old idiot. You know what I'm looking forward to, and sincerely, I, I mean, this has got to be happening sometime soon. Speakers implanted in your ears, so you don't have to get your fucking 
earbuds caught on everything. I, I actually I came up with <laughs> I, I came up with a uh, how comfy <laughs> like a a proposal for um, earrings that you that had little speakers on them like ten years ago or something, and I didn't do anything with it. I just wrote it down, and <laughs> so I claim that that would be fantastic. If you invent right it. now, and then you could do like a little uh, like a tongue stud with a uh, microphone on it. So your phone could be your immersed head. in a water. Tongue stud. You that have to do, I, you hear me? I got on board. Pierced. Can you hear me? What if, I, what if I just thought like this? Well, you know what? Maybe if you had eight hundred years, you could get someone to fund that for you. <laughs> I don't think you'd be able to get it uh, in anything less, though. I, the, we have the technology, people. All you need is a tongue stud and some glue, a Bluetooth, and, and some a Bluetooth, super glue. a Bluetooth microphone. We got Done. This. It's a very rudimentary device. <laughs> it's a prototype. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard to eat around. Technology. Harvard scientists are planning to change your mind for you before you know you've made up your mind. Uh, what? Chacho here with Chan and our guest Lisa Curry. Isn't that just propaganda? Mm -hmm. No, it's, it goes far beyond Harvard propaganda. Do you mean the lampoon? I mean like posters telling me to like buy Axe body spray. Oh, God. You don't know that you've already decided to be a douchebag. Uh, Do it. Harvard scientist Gabriel Kleiman. So he figured something out. Taking measurements of people's brains and the experiment that it was basically like there's a button. You can decide when to press the button anytime you want. And he reads people's brainwaves as they do this. Oh, and he also said, when you decide to press the button, check the second hand on the clock and see where it is. Okay. So you sit there and you hum for a few seconds and then you go, boom, and you press the button. His brainwave monitor can tell you're going to press the button three to five seconds before you realize you've made the decision to press ah, the button. Ah, okay, that's fucking freaky. So his fucking computer can predict that you're about to press the button or presumably other decisions you're going to make five seconds before you know you're going to make that decision. Five seconds before you even know? Yeah, before you even... Good God. Does he work on uh, Love Lives or no? <sighs> I'd like to know the horrible decisions I'm going to make before I make them, well, if he could, please. You're going to go out tonight and drink too much and wake so, up in a strange bed. So far, it's only five seconds ahead, so he probably can't do a whole lot for you. <laughs> so behind you like, hold, hold, hold on, hold on. <laughs> Can he do anything about past decisions? <laughs> he rigged up this crazy experiment. So that was the initial testing with the button. And he, he has this experiment now where he has people to uh, press the button. And before you press the button, it it flashes a sign that goes stop. Uh, oh, so fuck like that. Oh, you've so made cool. the decision. It oh. figures out when you've made the decision to press the button, and as oh. your finger is about to press it, it tells you to stop. It doesn't physically force you to stop yet, but the idea being that it, this is about impulse control, and we've talked recently on the podcast about people with poor impulse control. The idea is when you have an impulse. This brain monitor can tell you have that impulse and oh. you're about to do something That's and then up. it can either yeah. tell you to stop or probably maybe so you, we walk out of that room thinking like every decision you make all of a sudden you see stop ah no no because you're trained to before you even realize that you've made a decision the computer yeah. will tell you before i've decided to ogle somebody on the bus my glasses are just going to be like stop 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 uh. stop where is it tapping into or what's it measuring because it's, how... I think it's just looking at the brain and it's like if there's a flash. He's just watching you and as you raise your finger, it's like, stop. And you're <laughs> like, how the fuck did you know? <laughs> they, they tested people with epilepsy, not because, epilep not because epilepsy <laughs> is easy to say and not because epilepsy <laughs> is something that matters to the experiment at all. But the people with epilep oh boy. <laughs> that thing already had metal electrodes oh, okay. I implanted in their brain. Oh, I really don't like that. That creeps me out. Well, the, the electrodes help prevent seizures. Yeah. Wait, you want them to have seizures? No. What the hell's wrong with you, Curry? <laughs> Jesus. The idea of having something soul? implanted in your brain? I don't know. That's never been Those are the people getting struck by all that fucking lightning that's killing <laughs> everyone. <laughs> just conductors. <laughs> These people with antennas going out of their heads. <laughs> Maybe that's why they have epilepsy. Because <laughs> of the antennas in <laughs> their head and the lightning hitting it. <laughs> Did they get the epilepsy before or after we installed the giant lightning rod in their heads? 
I think I'm on to something, you guys. <laughs> we should have measured. So anyway, the people had, they already had the electrodes in their head, so he figured, well, we might as, I might as well use these sure. since they're there. And he uses them to, it says measure the neural activity. It doesn't really say what exactly that mm. means because there's well, tons I mean, of neural if, activity yeah. going on. Yeah, but, if all he needs to know is like, Oh, this side is this side like flashes just before the yeah, person press the button. Like something just, in your in your motor cortex like lights up when you're about to do something. So I guess he tapped into that. Whatever it may be. He's not doing anything with it, he's just he's just fucking with people. He wants to use this to help people with like Parkinson's or other diseases where you lose <laughs> Don't have Parkinson's. Stop. Voluntary. Stop having Parkinson's. Yeah. <laughs> Stop being sick, you guys. Seriously. <laughs> <laughs> um, people that lose, you know, muscle movement, I guess. Mm-hmm. I don't know exactly how this helps P- them. People like but. yourself who've suffered strokes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This best, this son of a bitch better have a good end game here. Cause right now all he's doing is being super creepy. Dr. <laughs> Mengele bullshit. You know, and it kind of sounds like the Parkinson's thing is, is like tacked on at the end where he's like, <laughs> Oh yeah. No. Oh is, yeah. I'm, I'm reading people's things. minds. Why? Uh, <laughs> uh, what, what sounds good? Yeah. <laughs> Lou Gary. It's like he got caught in the office like after hours. Sclerosis. What are you doing? <laughs> I'm planting uh, electrodes in people's brains. I'm what for? Curing uh, things. Science? Uh. <laughs> shut up and press the button. And okay, if you've listened to the show for any length of time, you know that um I, I know I, I have it. I hate <laughs> Honestly neither have I. <laughs> uh, I hate things with eight legs. Uh, mm. I love shit, and I love microbes. So I, just, I, I, I want to. I thought I was getting away from that when I when uh, eight legged shit monster. Story. Is, is <laughs> that what's coming? Yes, eight legged shit monsters is a story. Uh, waste heat. Um, another thing that I'm fascinated by is, and in some respects, it's tied into that shit thing. It's about. <laughs> It's about recycling. I don't think you needed to bring shit into re- the story at all. I think you just wanted to say I'll, that. I'll get to it. All right. It's recycling and reusing and like sort of closing that cycle. We use a shit ton of Waste energy. Heat. We use a shit ton of energy and a lot of it gets just so it's like just worn out as a lot of it gets washed down the drain when you're taking a shower or it goes out the window when you're heating your house. When power stations, you know, generate energy, they also generate a lot of heat that just just goes out into the air. The, the waste heat lost in the U.S., they figure, is equal to about the annual energy use of 5 million Americans. Um, Didn't they say that's the, the energy use of the entire country of Japan? No, that's just the... Uh, that's just the heat loss from power generation. Like our waste just, just heat from the power could power stations. Japan. It's not being wasted. It's be causing global warming, which is great. Yeah, it's going it into is, changing. It in, is. In some, it is actually uh, having a negative effect, just that waste heat that's coming off of cities because it gets into uh, air pockets. It shifts the jet stream. Yeah, around you have like a bubble of heat around cities. that goes not only in the air but underground too, which affects climate and weather patterns and jet stream and all that stuff. So there's a lot of talk about how to, you know, come up with technologies to reclaim some of that, mm-hmm. do some good stuff. Uh, one of the ways is uh, a cogeneration uh, for uh, cogeneration plants, which is taking the waste heat from power plants and sending the heat over to nearby cities. For example, because you can use that heat. Usually, waste heat isn't like steam hot. You know, like you need steam to power a turbine, and that's uh, how you generate electricity. But even the heat, the lower levels of heat, you can concentrate it and then use it to heat buildings, heat water Using you know, for houses. Heat pumps. Yes, the cogeneration plants can do that. They send uh, send it through pipes to nearby cities. Uh, ground source but, heat pumps are another interesting technology that have actually been around for a long time. Yeah, heat pumps are like all sorts of heat pumps are an old technology. It, it just means once you get a few meters below the ground, it's all about 10 degrees. Center. It's about 50 degrees average mm-hmm. just everywhere. So basically you sink a pump down there and either in the cold months you send refrigerant down and then it gets heated up by the ground temperature and spits it back up into your house, which then gets concentrated 
at the and very basic level, you can just shoot water into the ground, cold water into the ground, and it gets warmer. Or you can shoot warm water into the ground, and it gets colder, and basically use the ground to extract heat. Yeah, so you can use that, basically the same technology to extract heat out of sewers, power stations, uh, Ooh, subways. Let's get some of that sewer heat to heat my apartment. <laughs> well, I'm getting to that. <laughs> You can use uh, the water that's coming out of showers and just raw sewage, just the shit that's sitting around in those sewers. They have uh, in Oslo coils in there that extract, you know, like about uh, 10 degrees of heat. And then they compress that to 90 uh, to this thing's in centigrade. So I keep having to translate it. (laughs) They heat it up to about like 180 degrees and then uh, send it through pipes that warms 13,000 nearby apartments. So From their sewers? Yeah, just from the sewers. Just That's from awesome. Se- which isn't very hot, but you concentrate it and make it useful. Right. Um, there's subway stations. It also in- smells like shit, but man, is it warm. Mm, it's just warm. <laughs> they <like> are a- <laughs> efficient. <laughs> uh, subway stations in Germany, basically they create a liner, a liner for the subway because... It's gutting through there, and there's all sorts of heat getting kicked off from the subway. Anytime it slows down, there's all this heat generated. There's if body go, heat. There's brakes heat. There's yeah. If you go down heat. into a subway, it's usually it's warm. much, much warmer. Even in a parking there. garage, it's, yeah. war- you know. In Germany, they call them energy tubing because that's what Germans do. That's how they talk. <gasps> energy! Ah, <Ach>, yeah! <laughs> they took a, uh, a big old stretch of a high-speed rail tunnel. And they took all that energy and they warmed a municipal building nearby. And apparently temperatures got as low as like zero degrees. <laughs> and they managed to keep it warm just, just from stuff that was already there. Hmm. The sewer water. The subway stations are using that uh, ground storage uh, heat pumps. And data centers. Have you, have you ever been in like a server room? No. Uh, they they get, hot. They get hot. Your computer gets hot. That's why it has a little fan directly on the chip just imagine a room full of those chips that's what a data center is and it can you know get up to 115 degrees in the u.s there is a data center they figure they'll generate nine megawatts a year that they can send to a local community switzerland's got a thing where they heat a community pool with just just the data center from this building finland's warming houses with them we've finally solved our pools being too cold dilemma (laughs) good job science I want to know if I can uh, tap into the sewer beneath my house and heat the hot tub that I'm going to buy. The answer You could actually yes. just take the hot sewage and fill your hot tub. Oh, well, cut out the middle, man. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's always slightly embarrassing to me as an American when we used to be so far ahead with science and now it's now we're behind a lot. Well, yeah. And there's so much better technology in, in major cities all over the world. And I'm like, oh, this is embarrassing. Well, mm-hmm. uh, a, a lot of these sorts of things are happening in Europe because they have... They fund education. Well, no, their resources are a lot more limited than ours. So, you know, for years, we've just been able to like, ah, yeah, dig up more oil. We'll be fine. Uh, but over there, they have to conserve. And so they're finding new and exciting ways of doing it. We're going to... We're reaching that point really quickly where we're going to have to start using these things. And hopefully, you know, by the time the crunch comes, we'll be on top of it. I'm not holding out a lot of hope. Yeah. Well, we'll all live to 800 anyway, right? So Mm -hmm. just swimming in a tub of our own shit. (laughs) (laughs) Stay warm. Just fucking clueless. Oh, we got (laughs) this is the life. It's time for a quiz. It's time for it's time for a quiz. Uh, We got. (laughs) Two out of five last time, which is pretty sad. So we're going to go five for five this time, right, guys? Got right? it. Done. I'm ready. Right. Let's Our, see how I feel. Are we answering all the same questions? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we just recycled it. We should fucking nail it then. No. We're going to do all new, and we're going to kick ass. How many people were on the Apollo missions? Question one. What can't you stop moving if you suffer from athetosis? <laughs> Athetosis? What? When athet? What can't you st- like your foot? Maybe is like a jiggly like, like foot. 
Yeah. Yeah. Athlete, uh, Not athletes, but what, what is the, the nervous leg syndrome or the made up thing? Restless that, leg syndrome. Restless, the made up disease. That's that, completely made up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You've rolled your eyes like you've had personal experience. Someone you had once dated. It's like you like, just can't sit still. You. I do that. I fucking can't sit still and I'm chewing gum and I'm moving. You're, it's, I'm a child. That's what's going on. <laughs> I have not made it to adulthood yet. Do you think you have athetosis? Depending on what it is, yes and probably yes. <laughs> it's like, could what it be can't you stop moving? Fingers or your mouth? What are things that... Your you eye, eye... I feel like lids. eyes are a thing that maybe... Can't stop moving could be your an eyes. Physical thing that could be athetosis. Well, what's what tosis? Is athet- tosis? Tosis just reminds like, me of halitosis. It means uh, disease or ailment or okay. Osis is like a you know like a, a disease. Multiple so sclerosis. Athet- what is athet? I want to say it's something in your head. I don't think it's a. F- I mean, in your head, like your mouth or your something. I don't think it's your hands or your feet. I don't think it's a restless syndrome. I think it's it hung. I'm going to say like a uh, neurological issue. <laughs> your eyebrows. Your There's somebody out there that knows what this is and is like, you fucking idiots. Yeah, yeah, definitely. It yeah, makes well, me really happy. What did you call us two weeks ago when we were trying to answer this question? I want to say like foot. I feel I, like it could be restless, like le- restless leg syndrome. I'm going to say mouth just to say it. <laughs> mouth? See, and I'm Can't saying quit eyes. moving your mouth. So, eyes... Um, could be eyes. Oh, we have to settle on one, guys. Where are we going? Lisa, you have the deciding vote. No, I don't want that. Oh, yeah. No, no you, I don't want that. No, we did well. Actually, we did that, that was time. the one question we got right last time was the one you chose. One of the two. I'm going to say mouth. I got n- no real reason. All right. The answer is your fingers and toes. Oh, God. Uh, oh, is, God. I don't, how is that a thing? I do not accept that. <laughs> I don't even understand. It doesn't make about. sense. That's a fake. That's fake, and it's made up. I feel for like this you game. have to be well, back like, in the 80s. That's something <laughs> that happened, I guess. <laughs> yeah, how about the yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's more of a visual joke, guys. But uh, that was really funny. Question two: What do frogs have in their mouths that toads don't? Teeth. Uh, probably. Oh, I bet you it's tongue. Teeth. No, no they both it's have teeth. tongues. But they both teeth. They both it's teeth. can eat flies. Frogs don't have teeth. It's for sure teeth. I Dude, bet it is for teeth. sure teeth. I grew up on a lake. It's teeth. Are you serious? Yeah. That creeps me the frogs fuck have out. Teeth. To think that frogs have teeth. <laughs> I, I don't want frogs to have teeth. I've I've seen some frog teeth. Oh Jesus. Okay, we'll say that, and I'm going to be super teeth. super unhappy if that's the <laughs> correct answer. Um, teeth. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Oh. Nasty. Nasty. <laughs> Ew. I don't know what it's freaking me out about it. Just Can you just a imagine a frog with a body. smile? Yeah, just like... <laughs> like in a gold tooth. <laughs> Hello, my honey. Question three. What are the Star of Africa and Killinan 2? Like ships or something? What no, is, no, are they? Star of Africa. The, the first star one of sounds Africa? like a like a. It the first like one a boat. sounds like, like a, a jet. I think the Star of Africa. What like yeah. Concord? Colon and two sounds like a spaceship. The Star of Africa kind of sounds like a boat or something. I I'll go with boat. I'll go with like, like a tanker what or kind something. Kind of boat though. I mean, like it's a science question, so it has to be something specific, like a like a tanker. I don't know. The Star of Africa sounds pretty peaceful, so... I don't know. I kind of like supersonic jet. That definitely could be. I'm going to say ship. Yeah, ship. what kind of ship? Oil tanker, maybe, sounds good, I guess. I don't know. They're canoes. Sure. canoes. <laughs> Giant <laughs> Really canoes. nice canoes. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go with oil tankers. Let's see. Okay. Diamonds. Diamonds? Diamonds? Yeah, that's something are, that I much. certainly am Why would you <laughs> name a diamond? Because Star of Africa, I thought, like, maybe a diamond. But <laughs> Cullinan 2... It should Why be the blood star of the Africa. <laughs> it just wasn't as good as Colin and one, guys. Yeah, why is there two of them? How that do doesn't you, make I any sense. This, uh, Are they earrings? I, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Collect all two. <laughs> That's dumb. That was a dumb question. <laughs> yes, it was. We're suing Agreed. the makers. <laughs> question four. Who filed for the first patent in America for a motion picture camera? Mm-hmm. 
I'm just gonna say probably Kodak. somebody like Kodak. That sounds like a thing. Uh, that sounds that or sounds right. I'll go with Kodak. Ted Polaroid or like Panasonic. Joe Panasonic. <laughs> <laughs> George Camera. Ter- <laughs> What do you got there, George? I don't know what to call it yet. I was thinking wow. magic picture was box. Definitely... Why would you call it George? <laughs> eh, it doesn't quite have a ring to it. Oh, uh, gosh. Uh, yeah. well, I think we got to go with Eastman Kodak, right? That was... Wait a minute. Is the dude's name Eastman Kodak, or the, uh, was there a dude named Eastman and a dude named Kodak? I think it was a guy named Eastman Kodak. I don't know. I have no idea. We'll say Kodak is a good enough answer, right? If there's not, I'm going to cut that part out. You know what? We're going to say Kodak, and if, if we're close enough, we're going to... Extra credit. Thomas Edison, we are... That son of a bitch. We are horrible. We're failure. We are no oh, good at any oh. humanity. Well, I thought he was doing other bullshit. Uh, what probably, is he doing? Well, applying? He stole it from Tesla, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> he had a big old workshop, and people worked on shit, and then when they... Uh, figured it out then he bought the, the he pad. threw his name, on, his it. name on it fantastic because he's an asshole well then he was a dick and we can't be held absolutely. accountable for that <laughs> absolutely not question five last chance to redeem ourselves i think we've passed that three or four ago <laughs> what's the only mammal with four knees No, I don't like this at all. What's the only mammal? Come on, this should be easy. With four knees? Because a dog? Ob- obviously there's only one. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you're not allowed to give any words. Um, camel uh, comes to mind and, or elephant comes to mind. Yeah. <laughs> well, elephants, no, they're too goddamn big. Just picture like Elephants have play. knees. Have right. you ever been to they a circus? Have knees. Oh, they wait, do have they knees. They have knees and, and they can kneel. Oh, what am I thinking of? Yeah, obviously. Okay, that doesn't make any sense then. What's the only mammal with four knees? Like elephants are mammals. Like yeah. Camels are mammals. Cats are mammals. They don't have knees. They don't. Have, but they yeah, have, but like dogs go. Their legs bend. I think animals knees? that have haunches. The the thing that's analogous, the joint that's analogous to a knee, is the one that's up, and, and it's not called a knee because it's up high. Yeah, like most hippos? animals, like cats oh. and dogs, you know, because their back legs bend the other way. So a knee's so got to like, be like a front bendy. Kind it's of actually their heel, like the the knee, the the oh, knee of a yeah. dog, and the, the, and the back legs is actually their heel because that's where that joint. Which is why you say heel. Is. Knee. What? what? Yeah, you're blowing my mind right now. So we so I think like something. horses and things like that also have the same kind of structure as dogs, right? So maybe an elephant. Is it? I'll, I'll say I'll go with elephant. I feel like oh, elephant might be oh, it. Blue whale. Whales <laughs> have knees. <laughs> Serious though. Like no. Uh, Snake. Uh, Snake. <laughs> Snake's a reptile. I know that Snakes one. Have I know dumb. Thousands of knees. Uh, all right. Uh, snakes yeah. are covered in knees. And sharks have knees, but only surfers' knees. Let's, uh, let's go with elephant. Let's go with elephant. Who knows? The elephant. Hey. Yeah. That was brilliant. Good on us, you guys. Well, I'm glad you I guys. came to this. We podcast. got two for a grand total of four out of ten. So four I got fifty percent of those. Yes, you did. <laughs> Which is so, pretty. I think this is exactly what we got last week too. We um, wow. Ooh, we need to move on from this. We're box crushing this. <laughs> uh, still, could be worse. Could be worse. Is, we're we're, could we're be worse. just trying to prove. That we're not cheating. <laughs> Basically, this is oh, we are killing this is that. being a long running demonstration <laughs> that we are we do not make this up to make ourselves look good because we sure ain't looking good. We should change the parameters. <laughs> <laughs> I want all goal. questions edited out except for the ones that I just nailed. <laughs> <laughs> we the only two. decided to ask, answer four questions this week. <laughs> <laughs> Terror cells. Aspiring terrorists in our audience. Hooray, that's Take most of note. them. Can you hijack a plane with an Android phone? Please. The answer may surprise you. Doctor here with Chan and Lisa Curry. Um, there was a, was, I don't think it was a TED Talk, but a um, this is gaining a lot of traction on the internet. This guy named Hugo Tesso, uh, who's a security consultant, kind of demonstrated how one might take over a fully loaded passenger jumbo jet with a smartphone. 
Ooh. Great. Another thing to worry about. I'm really stoked. It's mm-hmm. not exactly like super easy, but it's kind of theoretically possible. Uh, okay. So it, airplanes communicate with control towers and they send radio signals that say where they are and their altitude and where they're going and things like that. And the air traffic controller sends things back like how the weather is and where the other planes are and and so it's just idle chit chat. It's just like a bunch of old biddies running around a quilting circle, like, "So, how's your family? <laughs> What's the weather like? Oh, that's nice. Clear to land. <laughs> <laughs> you guys, women don't fly planes, <laughs> <Please>. <laughs> and for good reason. <laughs> so yeah, it's a digital chit chat. It's just uh, back and forth between the planes and the control towers, and between the planes themselves. And it's basically his point is. The security is pretty low on these radio signals. So if one were able to crack the code, which theoretically is possible, one The password might... is password. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> one, two, three, four. <laughs> oh, okay. So so he's not like hijacking it and like like turning like like steer right, Physically steer taking... left. He's just saying like He's putting in navigation data, like like uh, to like, crash planes to each other in the sky, or just like it's like they think they're going to New York, but instead they're going to Haiti or something like that. The thing is, the plane isn't flown exclusively through communication with the control tower. Like it's, I no, mean, not but, even close. Well, actually, it is kind of close. For the most part, they stay on autopilot and just fly according to whatever. But he's also talking but, about you. It's it might be possible, and he didn't actually do it but he demonstrated on like a a simulator how it might be possible to break into the flight management system which is the actual it is basically the the internal instruments it's the autopilot he's saying it's kind of a roundabout way because he's not Mm -hmm. actually demonstrating how to do it well no no, absolutely do not demonstrate how to do it (laughs) he's not really saying it's possible he's just saying that it's possible it's possible what are you saying he hasn't been able to prove it but he's saying it's right he's theorizing do you think there's any pilots out there that are like there's no fucking way because if you okay if if you were driving your car and somebody had the ability to tap into the system and drive you into a building you'd get pretty close to the building and be like what the fuck and then right and you would you could steer away. And what it says is the, the antidote to this is turn off the autopilot and the pilot flies the plane. But since then, hum, you can't have since any the autopilot's then. usually on, uh, he was one of his demonstrations was you could, you know, sir, you could reroute the plane to go to a different airport and nobody would notice until you were in your, the landing pattern at Cuba or something like that. Yeah. If they want to reroute my planes to Chicago and send me to New York City, that is fine. <laughs> Maybe you should get this app. <laughs> I absolutely And then will. when you're on the plane, it's, you can decide. Yeah, it's like four ninety nine in the app store. Is it's kind of pricey. Do, I, do, do I want Chicago pizza or do I want New York pizza? <laughs> uh, I, I'm just concerned that people are going to freak out. TSA is going to say, all right. No smartphones. No whatsoever phones on, on a plane. Yeah, right. Know, that's so what people would take would, over the plane and it. lose their minds. There's yeah. no way. You know what? And they're taking off there's... their shoes before they get on planes. Oh god! I think they'll give it in pretty. Easy. People are already sort of overreacting. I think to this. I, it's it's not really as possible as this guy is saying. I think he's just kind of demonstrating that security in the radio signals between planes needs to be beefed up a little bit so it's not as easy to hack into. Can you play Angry Birds? <laughs> With the plane? With the planes. <laughs> this is what I want to know. You fling your plane like a, <laughs> a slingshot at some pig farms. Pigs yeah. in ramshackle houses. Look at that pig. He's sitting right next to a keg of TNT. Let's get him. <laughs> That's our show. And that's our show. Thank you very much to Lisa Curry, or as some people in this room would have it, Lisa Curry. <laughs> uh, thanks for having me. My brain still hurts. <laughs> I'm almost to the end, though. Uh, where can they find you, Lisa? Uh, you could check for my shows and 
you can actually read my uh, terrible blog on my website at lisacurry.net. Dot net. Uh, or your blo- does your blog have a name or is it? Just no, Lisa I mean Curry it's just it? on my it's on my website. I'll just write something that I hate every once in a while. <laughs> <laughs> you can hate it too. <laughs> Lisa Curry done it. Tell tell me about how much you fucking hate it. Um I love that. Um <laughs> And you're on Twitter. Yeah, and if you're on Twitter, follow me at, at Lisa underscore curry. Underscore. Um all the cool kids are doing it. Mm. And uh you can also add me on Facebook, which is my Twitter feed plus shows and whatever. It's kind of like a hybrid of my website and Twitter. And that's It's an abomination. <laughs> Gene splicing <laughs> exactly. Twitter and it's it's alive. Alive. And that is uh Facebook dot com slash Lisa Curry, you're welcome. So thanks for having me. Thanks for thanks having for coming. Us. Do you of feel course. more sciencey? I more, feel like I'm really proud of myself for uh the eggs answer that's really that's what the takeaway <laughs> yeah you really <laughs> nailed the eggs i think that was yeah. the last episode but yeah it's, yeah it's held think, over yeah uh, it's, we can, we that, can, that pride's gonna carry me <laughs> until like mid much, day tomorrow <laughs> you can coast on that achievement for the next few years I feel like. <laughs> I we'll, we'll edit so. testing auditions we'll edit the quiz down to just the two questions <laughs> that you answered and that's it if you, if you get turned away from the velvet rope club do you know what i do <laughs> I got the fucking eggs question right. Exactly. Do you know how many eggs people eat in a year? Two hundred sixty-three, no, motherfucker. You don't do you? And then you get in the club. Done. You can find us at thesciencejerks.com or sciencejerks.com. We're on Twitter at the science jerks. We're on Facebook. Facebook. If you want to buy an Amazon book. Go to our website and just click through and we'll get a If you want to buy an Amazon anything, for heaven's sake, you want to buy a food dehydrator, please go to our website. If you want to buy a house on Amazon. I don't know that they sell those. They do sell tractors, though. Used. Okay. A tractor house. Whatever. (laughs) Buy it through our website. Absolutely. Please buy your tractor house through us. And you can follow Robert Chan at 999 RPMs. You can follow Dave Chacho at Dave Chacho. And you can listen to us when we come back next week. (laughs) Give David Lawton a raise. I have more than one herp. I have herpes. I have all the herps. So many herpes.